Today, Senator Flake from Arizona delivered a speech on the Senate floor that heavily rebuked President Trump's rhetoric and his White House and his tenure as president so far. And many have chosen to praise him for being a conservative voice that is leading the charge against the awful words used by this administration. I'm not one of them. I'm actually very annoyed by this practice because there exists a website in which we can check out um, Senate votes. And more often than not, since Trump's been in office, Flake has voted with Trump on the majority of the things he's proposed. Now, I believe that if someone is a senator, they have two powers that are exclusive to them in that position. Introducing legislation or voting on certain bills. And when he uses his power to vote in a way that contradicts his rhetoric, which is very anti-Trump, I, I, I almost can't take it seriously. It seems as akin to a parody. Um, and unfortunately, we live in a reality where the policies enacted by Trump are affecting people. And you have both the media, very many commentators, a multitude of people just across the board on both sides who are still criticizing him over various things that he says. And look, I'm not defending uh, his rhetoric, but when we live in an era where people get praise for saying one thing and doing another, as in the case with Flake of voting with Trump but talking out against him, I don't want to hear what particular things Trump has said. You know, if if we're unable to understand the difference between words and actions, we have a problem. And I know we've been able to do that in the past, which is why I uh, feel inclined to not believe that. But nonetheless, what what bothers me is that with Flake, he decides to not run for another term. And people develop this idea that, oh, yes, he's trying to save his career from being dragged down in the trenches by the Trump era. Um so he's now going to become a critic so we can see him as one of the moderate ones. No, no, if 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 Flake was in office, he would have put out that same tax bill, would have uh did the transgender military ban. There are, really there's nothing different about a Flake presidency or a Corker presidency or a Cruz presidency other than what they have to say. And I I just can't stand how people aren't able to get that while Trump may seem unique in his various words and phrases and manners of articulating things, he is the centerpiece of all of the conservative or otherwise Republican type policies and uh, actions that we've seen in past administrations and have that has been part of the rhetoric they've had in uh, the last couple of decades. You know, if you didn't get him, you'd have someone else doing that. And many of the Republicans that are in either the House or the Senate that one day dream of running for that office would have the same platform. Now, they may go and say, oh, I don't like what Trump said about this. But other than that, there wouldn't be a difference. And, and that's really where the problem, in, uh, the problem lies. You have to stop going after people for various things they say, no matter how dumb you think it is, and start applying that to what actions they have. You know, as much as I didn't favor many of those rallies, um that have taken place since Trump's been in office, at least they're over what he's done. They're over his immigration policy, his social policy. They have more than just, well, he said something I didn't like. You know, uh, that is the difference between activists and those that have a negative opinion of something. When you are an activist, you are concerned with a state of affairs and really, with those who've had this negative opinion, it seems as though the only thing that bothers them is just what he has to say. And, you know, if I were to go and rank the various things that concern me about him as president in office, that would be all the way at the bottom. Because his um, vocabulary is not determining how much I'm going to have to pay in taxes or, you know, if I'm going to get a pay cut or get fired or something to that effect. It's just not worth it to continue to give praise 
to various uh, members of Congress, whether they're in the House or the Senate, that choose to support him by vote, but speak out by voice. I don't want to hear it. So I, I thought that speech was hollow. I think it should it should be it should be remembered as an example of how a a politician can trick a sizable number of people into thinking I'm for you and I'm really with him just by condemning something this person or their administration has done. So that's that should be the legacy of this speech today, not any of the other stuff about taking a strong stand against Trump. We've had enough people doing that and it's always rhetoric um on the part of many of the Republicans in office. Go go after him for his actions and the various things he's been enacting.